Hello there fellow model makers and welcome to the fourth and last part of my AFX 148 scale JU87 B1 Stuka build. Having made this kit, I was so happy with it that I have already ordered a few more AFX kits. The one I am really looking forward to is the Lancaster in 72nd scale. So, last time we painted the kit, did some chipping and sealed everything with a couple of coats of gloss varnish. Now that the varnish has dried nicely, I can start fixing the decals. The decals in the kit were reasonably good but the larger ones were a little thick. Also, for some reason, they took forever in warm water to come loose from the decal sheet. Other than that, they conformed rather well after I had applied some decal softening solution. These black decals I believe are the walkway indicators on the wings. Now if you notice, we have chipped the wing root rather aggressively. It would be odd to have the underlying wing paint chipped but the black walkway intact. So I tear up the decal before applying it. I try to rip it so that it matches the chipping pattern. I purposely damaged all the decals that went on areas that were chipped. I think it looks just a little more realistic. Just remember, do not tear or damage the identification roundels. From what I have read, the ground crew were very particular about keeping the big identification marking clearly painted, as the pilot's life depended on his mates being able to identify him during combat. Also in some cases, particularly when it came to Japanese aircraft, maintaining the markings was also a matter of national pride and prestige. These smaller black stripes did not fit the way the instructions indicated they would. Further, I could not find any decent reference of these kind of narrower stripes. So I just left the smaller ones off. With the decals fixed and nicely conformed to the surface, I give the kit another coat of gloss varnish and let it dry for a day. Time to give the kit a wash and my preferred wash is an oil wash. So I take some black and brown oil paints and dilute them with turpentine. This sludge is then applied thoroughly over the kit and allowed to dry for about an hour. One good thing about oil based washes is that they take a long time to dry. So there is no hurry when it comes to remove the extra wash. The other thing is that you can simply wipe the wash away with a paper towel. Like I am doing here. No need for any thinner or spirit. Just wipe off the extra wash.
I now glue the wheels and the die flaps in place. The kit is now given a coat of matte or flat varnish. While the matte varnish dries, I cut, clean and put together all the remaining parts, like the propeller assembly, central canopy and the bombs. These are now painted. The trailing wheel is now hand painted.
All the parts were given a coat of gloss varnish and allowed to dry. I now use a sponge to add some chipping on the propeller assembly. I purposely smudged some of the chipping in the direction of the wind. I think it looks nice. Other parts are also chipped with a sponge. The exhaust and the guns are now hand painted with black. I use AK Interactive's light rust to start the smoke streaks. This did not really show up on camera. Even to the naked eye, it was barely visible as a change in hue. So to deepen the smoke streaks, I now add Tamiya's X19 smoke. All that remains to be done is to unmask the kit and glue in the last of the pieces. Right then fellow model makers, here it is, my take on AFX's 148th scale JU87B1 Stuka. In the end, a very enjoyable build and a really nice kit. I hope you enjoyed the video series. In case you did, please do leave a like and a comment. Do subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click the bell icon for future updates. That about wraps it up for this series. Till next time, stay safe, good luck and happy model making.